Jackie, 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 Jackie. How could you do this to me? Rush hour, Shanghai new, the tuxedo. I thought we had something together, you know. Something special. Six months ago, when I was working in Istanbul, I caught a bootleg copy of a movie that our talented stuntman not only helped write and produce, but also directed. Ostensibly a movie about reclamation of Chinese artifacts, Chinese Zodiac is among the most derivative, racially insensitive, and ear-piercingly annoying movies ever made. It gives Temple of Doom a run for its money. The film starts off with a short history lesson about the Chinese old summer palace. Ya bunja shaitanlar! Sorry, knee jerk reaction. We see more racial stereotypes as fat businessmen are pawning off fakes of rare artifacts for massive profits. They call on a JC to retrieve the remaining zodiac heads. Oh, I have the most brilliant idea, Huxley. We will hire a famous stuntman actor to retrieve priceless historical artifacts. Genius. Cut to some lady who appears to have the superpowers of a Thai hooker. This absurd scene goes absolutely nowhere as it cuts to probably the one of the greatest chase scenes put on camera as Jackie escapes from the facility in this insane luge suit. Jackie apparently loved this scene so much, it's on the cover of all the DVDs of this movie, and most of the posters too, even though it has absolutely no point in the movie other than to show how much of a badass he is. Learning that some of the Zodiac Helds are being held in the possession of a French nobleman, Jackie sneaks into the mansion. Yep, the billionaire art collector was keeping the password right next to the console instead of on his person. At least the racism in this movie goes both ways. Zing! Cut to some other mansion where they discover one of the descendants of the original party that invaded the palace. Passive aggressive arguing ensues between Catherine and Coke, which is such a grindingly awful point that even Jackie has to step in to tell the bitch to shut up. Catherine then agrees to let them research the artifacts in her home in hopes that it will lead her with information about her missing great grandfather. Let me tell you, heavy ass bronze heads, super easy to carry on a thin stick. As examining one of the paintings in the house leads the crew to an island where they believe Catherine's great grandfather was shipwrecked. Hold on! Bitch, not 10 goddamn minutes ago you were whining at Catherine for being too much of a pansy, and now you're clinging to her ankle for dear life. Please give me something, anything to make me care about you as a character and not as a sniveling little shit. While rummaging through the shipwreck, the cast gets ambushed by a bunch of pirates. And please take the term pirate lightly, because these bastards are less intimidating than Pintel and Ricketti. They even have a guy dressed exactly like Jack Sparrow, just to remind us that we're watching a derivative piece of drivel. Can someone take the rocket launch away from Jamal before he kills us all? Continuing to flay the skin around her eyes, this devolves into a ridiculous fight scene. Man, it's a good thing her great-grandfather has four fucking femurs or else we wouldn't have this terrible joke padding out the running time. They hop onto a log where told is filled with gold and make their escape. It even sounds like pirates. Here, let me play it back to back. Oh well, I'm sure glad that 8 tons of gold is buoyant. I wouldn't want my sense of disbelief getting in the way of enjoying this movie. We're treated to some laughably bad shots where the most stereotypical news reporters announce the return of artifacts to one at the start of the film. The last one, the dragon, is expected to sell for even more- Hold on, this one isn't racist enough. Here, let me fix it. The last one, the dragon- There we go. The movie wraps itself off as a super evil corporation tries pawning off Glass Bronze Head by threatening to THROW IT INTO A VOLCANO IF NO ONE BUYS IT. <sighs> I can't even make jokes anymore. I'm so at the end of my rope that I'm just going to be spewing bile for the rest of the review. As if I haven't been already. 
All of a sudden, a mysterious fourth man appears, and we learn that Jackie is making a last ditch attempt to save it. Finally, the movie peters off. Time to get to the pointless and arbitrary plot points that introduced more than halfway through the film. The conclusion then climaxes in the most cliche way possible. Freeze frame. I don't even have to say anything. It's so retarded that it's funny on its own. So that was Chinese Zodiac. Great action. Great stunts typical of a Jackie Chan movie. But the characters plot and writing are so grindingly annoying that I'd rather stick a toothpick under my big toenail and kick a wall. It's sad when the crowning moment of this film was a blooper where Pancake Face smacked herself for the car door. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Serves your right, you insufferable dits! So when I recommend this movie, at nearly two hours long I get more cultural enjoyment out of Chinese water torture. At least I can say, I'm back baby! Say I'm poop face. I'm awesome.